Dung beetles are, they perform many important roles in the ecosystem. So they are very important for nutrient cycling. Basically they go around, they find all the dung lying around and they dig it into the soil. So that's adding nutrients to the soil, um, aerating the soil as well. Um, and they also act as secondary seed dispersers. So when an animal has a poo um, and it has lots of seeds in it, um, all those little seedlings will be competing with each other. Um, what the dung beetles do is they take these big piles of poo and they separate them out. Um, they separate them out into little other areas and this gives those seedlings more of a chance to actually become established and grow, um, reducing competition within that um, deposit. <laughs> I was a little bit worried that it would be hard to get people on board with this project. However, I've actually been really pleasantly surprised at how much everyone's embraced it. Um, there have been plenty of jokes. Um, I think one of the highlights of this project is the comedy value of it. Um, no one can be down when you're doing a dung beetle project because the, yeah, the whole process is quite entertaining. Okay, so just put a little bit in. Maybe that was a bit worse. So when um, surveying for dung beetles, uh, you could use a variety of different dung types, however, possibly unfortunately, um, the mo one of the most effective types of bait has been found to be human dung. Uh, this is also one of the best types of bait to use because it can be easily standardised anywhere in the world. Anywhere where you've got a field team working, you're going to have the same dung source. Um, so that's quite handy, however the logistics of collection can be a bit of a sensitive topic. What we have, we've got a beautiful shack set up um, behind our buildings here, um, equipped with a, a bucket for collection, um, and also some very informative signs for people who would be, like to know what they're contributing for and why it's important, um, <laughs> just as a nice little extra. We then take these collections and we prepare them into small bait parcels, and those parcels can then be taken out and added to the traps in the forest when we set those up. Um, the traps are quite simple, they're just um, some plastic cups dug into the ground uh, that act as a pitfall trap. We put a little bit of soap water solution in those cups. Um, the soap just breaks the surface tension so that when beetles fall in, they drown in that cup. Um, we then hang the parcel of bait just above the cup. We put a little plate over that to protect it from the sun and rain. And basically the dung beetles will very quickly smell the bait, they'll be attracted to it, and they'll try and clamber onto the bait parcel. Um, they are quite clumsy though, so they then fall into the cup, um, and the next day we'll come around and collect them. Um, collecting the beetles, we just go out, we um, sieve the beetles from the soapy water, um, and pour them into a bag where they're stored with alcohol. Um, we'll then take them back to camp, and then be identifying them um, later on. In order to identify the beetles, we'll be taking the samples back to the LLC and then um, possibly on to Cusco, where we'll be identifying them with the use of identification plates that have been prepared for other areas of, around Manu, uh, as well as museum resources and published literature to help us figure out what species we've got around here. Well, in addition to the important roles they play, there are also lots of other interesting little facts about them. Um, one of the most exciting I came across recently was that dung beetles are the only animal that have been shown to use the Milky Way to navigate. So what they do is they use the gradient of light to help them determine whether or not they're going in a straight line. Because basically when they come to a dung pile, there's massive competition at this pile from other beetles and they want to get away from that as quickly as possible. Um, so they just want to grab some dung and go in a straight line immediately away from that pile. Um, so to do that they use um, the galaxy, which is pretty amazing. So whilst dung beetles are small, the small things in the ecosystem should most definitely not be overlooked. 
Invertebrates tend to be one of the groups that play some of the largest roles in the ecosystem just through their sheer numbers um, and it can actually, well, actually exceed mammals in the biomass that they're contributing to the forest. Also, um, if dung beetles were absent from this ecosystem, they would be very quickly missed. Here in the Amazon, if we didn't have dung beetles, there'd be a lot less um, nutrient cycling going on. Um, and the soil quality here in the Amazon is actually already quite poor. So it's very important that we have dung beetles there to take whatever nutrients are being deposited by mammals in the area and get those into the soil um, quite quickly. Um, and it's also important that they control um, parasites and so on by cleaning up dung. Uh, which then help protect the mammal communities that might be um, affected by any disease outbreaks. We've done very little dung beetle research here at MLC before. There is some data collected a few years ago um, by other researchers. However, for us, um, with our current research programme, uh, it's really great to be starting a new project and be finding loads of new species um, and learning a lot along the way. It's also going to be really cool to see how functional groups change um, along this gradient of disturbance. So not only looking at how many different types of beetles we're getting, but trying to learn more about how that's impacting the ecosystem function um, and how that changes with disturbance.